In this video, we're going to talk about rational functions. But what are rational functions? Well, the word rational is familiar. We've seen this word pop up in numbers. We know what rational numbers are. Knowing what rational numbers are will help us define what rational functions are. There's a big similarity. Let's look at both of them. So rational numbers and rational functions. What are rational numbers? But all the numbers that are of the form P by Q where P and Q are integers and Q is not equal to zero, they're all rational numbers. All the fractions that you see, they're all rational numbers. Now let's look at the definition of rational functions. Rational functions are of the form Px by Qx, where Px and Qx are polynomial functions. And we've thoroughly discussed what polynomial functions are in our previous video. And just like in the case of rational numbers where we don't want the denominator to be zero, we also have a constraint here we don't want the qx to be zero because when that happens, the denominator is zero and math breaks. So very similar definitions. Here we have integers, here we have polynomial functions. So now that we have defined what rational functions are, let's take an example and try drawing its graph. So here's an example. We have a function f from r minus zero. Here zero is not included in the domain. r minus zero to r defined by y equals to fx equals to 1 by x and x belongs to r minus 0. So the domain does not have 0. This is our function and let's break this down. This part means that f is a real function. This gives us the domain and this is the definition of the function. But wait, how do we know this is a polynomial function? Let's look at it. This is 1 by x. 1 is a polynomial function. Yes, it is. Is x a polynomial function? Yes, x is also a polynomial function. And we're given that x can't take a value of 0. This means we are safe. Our denominator will never be 0. So this checks out. 1 by x is a rational function. All right. So now let's draw this graph. We have the x-axis. We have the y-axis. We want to draw y equals to 1 by x. Let's plug in some values. Let's take x as 0. But wait, x can't be 0. So let's not take x as 0. Let's take some other values. Let's take x as 1. For 1, we have 1. For 2, we'll have 1 over 2. That's half. For 3, we'll be 1 third. Similarly, for a large value, let's say 9, we'll get 1 by 9. So let's plot these points. We have 1 comma 1. We have 2 comma half, 2 comma half. So we're moving here. And then 3 comma 1 by 3. So moving in this direction. And then we have 9 comma 1 by 9. So we're here. This is interesting. Even if the value is very large, its reciprocal will be something positive. It will be very small, but it will be positive. So this line will never cross the x-axis. It'll look something like this. Okay, so we have one part of the graph. Let's plot some more points. Let's plot some negative points. Okay, let's put in minus one. Uh, reciprocal of minus one will be minus one. Minus two will give us minus half. Minus three will give us minus one by three. And then like nine, we'll have minus nine. This should give us minus one by nine, yes. So let's plot these points. For minus one, we have minus one. For minus two, we have minus half. For minus three, we have minus one by three. And for minus nine, we have minus one by nine. Very similar to this graph. Okay, so this is what we have for negative values. No matter how much we go in this direction, this curve will never cross the x-axis. Is this it? Is this the entire graph? Actually, no. We're missing some values. We have all the values for one and above, and we have all the values for minus one and below, but we don't have values from minus one to one. So now let's see what's happening here. Let's take some values from zero to one. Let's take some fractions. We can have half. For half, we'll get one over half. That's the reciprocal of half. That's actually two. For one third, we'll get three. For one fourth, we'll get four. For one ninth, we'll get ninth. So we're getting our values back. So let's plot them. Half will give us two, one third will give us three, one fourth will give us four, and so on. This graph looks like this. This graph shoots up, but again, this will never cross the y-axis. And I think the same will be the case in this direction as well. Let's plot some points. Let's add some negative values. For minus half, we have minus two. Minus one by three will give us minus three. Minus one by four will give us minus four. And if you plot these values, this is what we get. This is the graph of y equals to 1 by x. So it has a curve here and it has a curve here and these two curves don't meet. 
Technically speaking, this is called the rectangular hyperbola, but we'll cover this in a different chapter called conic sections. Let's figure out its domain and range. So for domain, we have to ask ourselves, what are the values of x that we have? Well, x takes all positive values and all negative values. The only value that x does not take is 0. So this means the domain is all real numbers except 0. That's the domain x where x belongs to real numbers minus 0. What about the range? Well, this graph is very identical, very symmetrical. The range is also the same. y also takes all positive values and all negative values. The only value that y does not take is 0. There is no input that you can have for which you have an output of 0. So the range is also same. Range of f is y where y belongs to r except 0. That's going to be the domain and range. All real numbers except 0.